Dude, it's happened. <laughs> Mata, Scourge is dead in <laughs> PvP. Its reign is finally over. It is actually a bannable offense to solo queue on Scourge, guys. Okay, that is reality. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Balance Patch Review. Let's have a look at what we've got on here. We've got some some world polish thingies as well to go over there, but we're going to go over all of the patch notes here all in one go. Let's get on to it, guys. We are now on the Elementalist patch notes. So let's have a look at this. In this update, we're following up on some of the Tempest changes from the previous update. Speedy Conduit has been a lackluster trait for a while, so we're combining it with Harmonious Conduit and creating a new trait that grants concentration. Imbued Melodies is being removed. We felt it wasn't very interesting while also being unnecessarily restricted by being tied to the Warhorn. Its replacement, Transcendent Tempest, provides an effect that is unique among other Grandmaster traits, which we'll hope will provide a more meaningful choice when compared to the other options. You know, funnily enough, actually, I don't think that it was too restricted by being tied to a Warhorn, seeing as, um... A lot of classes have weapon traits. I, I actually kind of... I like weapon traits. I, I, th I would love to see more weapon traits. I mean, from War, uh, Tempest now doesn't have a, a Warhorn trait, which kind of sucks. I, I would love to see a Warhorn trait. And also, uh, just the passive proc was actually very strong off this um, this trait, so it wasn't actually that restrictive. But, uh, you know, fair enough. And Transcendent Tempest is also a really, really cool trait. So I'm, go I'm actually going to shrink this down just, in, just an itty bit. So I've got some space on that side of the screen. Because I want to be able to show you guys stuff. So, we've got this brand new trait. We've got some new traits going on here. Uh, called Gathered Focus. Right? This is the one that replaced Hardy Conduit. And this one means that you get 120 extra concentration. And another 120 while you're over 90% health. Now... In PvE, that's going to be a lot of the time. And honestly, in PvP, that can probably happen uh, a fair bit as well, because you're going to be resustaining yourself, rehealing. Um, so, you know, when it counts, you can get a 240 concentration in these game modes. And that's nothing to be sniffed at, actually. 240 concentration is what? Is that is... Blah, that is... Uh, like 11, it's, um, no, it's 16% boon duration. That's, um, that's a powerful trait just to have for free. 16% boon duration a, a lot of the time. Uh, it's a, it's a good trait, actually. This is a good trait. And bear in mind, you effectively get this for free as well, because before, this trait just gave you protection when you overloaded. They actually merged, um, that one together with another trait. So you, now you get, um, wait, hang on. Yeah. So now what happens is that you get protect, you still get protection. Oh, they moved the swiftness off. That's actually that actually kind of sucks. Uh, that actually feels pretty bad. They removed the they put it on harmonious conduit. So if you want to get swiftness, they put it on harmonious conduit now. Uh, that's quite unfortunate. I'm so I really think they should have given Tempest that for free actually, and just put it on Hardy conduit as well, um, or maybe even just kept it on uh, on gathered focus or something like that for the extra speed. Because now your swiftness uptime is gonna suck, actually, um, when you start an overload, but, well, I mean, there you go, I guess. Yeah, soon as and Prot has one minor, yeah, that's what I thought they would have gone with, but they, they didn't do that. Uh, but, oh, well, there you go. That's kind of unfortunate, a little bit unfortunate. And then, uh, let's see, the brand new, let's talk about the brand new trait as well. The Transcendent Tempest trait, a brand new icon here. Look at that, and this is a this is a pretty cool effect actually. So it, it gives you a delay on your singularities, right? Which means how long it takes you to overload. That's, that's a role play name. And after you do an overload, it's going to um, it, it's going to give you seven percent damage and condition damage after you do it. And that will. Um, yeah, so that is big. They kind of removed that from Harmonious Conduit. Harmonious Conduit used to give you a damage buff afterwards, but now they've moved it over to Transcendent Tempest as well. And it's a little bit stronger. Um, Harmonious Conduit, I believe, was 5%, and now Transcendent Tempest is 7%. So yeah, it, it's a little bit more of a powerful trait there. And as you can see, right, it now takes uh, just, you know, four seconds to get to an overload. Instead of the five, just a little bit, a little bit under four seconds to get in there. So, quite a powerful trait there as well. So, you know, if you have a lacquer, you'll be able to spam this pretty hard. It was ten percent damage, not seven percent damage, and Condi. Oh, I thought they actually nerfed it. Oh, it was ten percent. Oh, yeah, they nerfed the duration, didn't they? They nerfed the duration, not the um, 
Uh, the, the, the modifier, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, this is probably better because it lasts longer. It's 7 seconds, 7%, as opposed to 10% for 4 seconds, right? So 10% for 4 seconds is actually worse than 7% for 7 seconds-ish. Okay, or oh, it's actually kind of, it's, yeah, it's pretty close, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a... It's a little bit better. And you also have... This also works for Condi, so you can play Condi Might God Ellie. Um, so yeah, Condi Might God Ellie is going to be pretty spicy. But also, uh, another thing that's going to be really spicy is going to be like the fresh air build. That Now you get even more air overloads in. Um, and you can get more static charges for more uh, damage. Because every time you land an air overload, um, you give your party like a, an air sigil proc, basically. Uh, and of course, this gives you more damage, right? So you want to use this um, as often as you can. So this is quite a, a strong... As strong as they use, you're gonna have more auras. But you won't, you mean, yeah. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, guys. You'll be able to apply a lot of boons, actually, guys. A lot of boons doing this. Like, there's, there's some fun builds you can you can make with this uh, if, if you wanted to, actually. But it's uh, it's cool stuff. It's it's a really cool change to Tempest. And I, I don't know why they aren't more aggressive with Tempest, actually. Uh, I wish that they would be just really give it some proper. Uh, buffs in PvP because its power level is is so weak. I mean, I guess they want to reduce stuff like Firebrand down to where Tempest is, but um, you know, I, I want them to, to get on it, right? Like, get on with it. Like, let, let's get Tempest back in PvP, you know? Um, it it kind of sucks, but I guess they don't want to power creep the game, but I don't know. Like, everything else is so insanely powerful. Like, it'll be a very long time before Tempest sees play at the current rate, which kind of sucks. I like the changes in PvE, though. Like, again, I, I, I still think they could give Tempest a bit of a nudge. Like, what I think Tempus needs a really well-defined niche. I'd love to see it have some more aggressive buffing potential, right? Because if you line it up against something like Druid, I mean, Druid's buffs are bloody boring, right? Like, you know, you've got Frost Spirit, Sun Spirit. Um, and <laughs> wow. I, I suppose that Ellie has the advantage of having really good boons. It has better boon support and less uh, damage support over the druid but the druid also has very serviceable boon support especially on a lot of um a lot of fights so maybe the tempest just ha kind of has to have that trade-off but and it does damage as well it, it, whereas the druid will not really do a lot of damage so i guess there is that trade-off but i kind of really like um gimmicks where you have to kind of weave in like to buff the team like give them a lightning strike right um that sort of thing like the fresh air build is a really cool idea to me and uh stuff like this is nice so I i'd love to see that kind of get some more attention uh, and make it um even stronger than already is like make the make the buffing more a part of it like i i want to see more hybridization like right now a lot of the damage right that you get from um play you know from playing tempers is you, you give people boons right i, I want to see some unique modifiers that really increase group dps you know i think that will be really good you know it was um yeah let, let's let's get that going right let's let's get some hybridization let's have some proper support let's have some aggressive supports right like druid is an aggressive support but it's just not a very interesting one you know um i i'd like to see some more aggressive support options lining up you can buff your team with stuff it's good, but overall, great changes, extra concentration. Shame about the loss of swiftness on the overload. That actually kind of hurts more than you might expect, actually. Uh, it might kind of hurt. There you go. Good changes to Ellie, actually. Really, really solid uh, changes to Ellie. I like it. There's also a slight quality of life on Signet there. You can always, um, uh, you can always stun break now, no matter what. Engineer. When the Scrapper's profession ability was changed to an F5 skill, the tool belt skill from Sneak Gyro Detection Pulse was replaced. That skill was sorely missed as it provided a, use, a useful and skilled counterplay if well-timed. As the profession mechanic needed to remain on the F5 key, we looked elsewhere and saw that Purge Gyro, an inherently defensive and utility-centric ability, had a tool belt skill that did not fit its intent. Scrap is also getting a bit of a tune-up with its hammer skills and a reduction to the vitality loss of the impacts of Entree, which was leaving them a bit squishier than we intended for the blue bruiser style of play. Yeah, you can say that again. Uh, they got deleted from the game. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Do you, do you, you guys want to know the kicker? Okay. Oh, no. This is, uh, 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 is going to be... Oh, no. We're going to get debates. Like This is going to be a hot take. Um, but... So, Scrapper is, is they, when they nerf Scrapper for the first time, like they they probably they probably over nerfed it a little bit, right? But here's the thing, like classes like this have to be nerfed down to this really low, uh, low power level because of how insanely high the power level was before. Like you could press like two buttons on Scrapper and get perma barrier for all eternity, 
Right, that was retar- it was terrible. It, it was awful. It was just ridiculous. It was absurd. Right, so yes, it sucks that your class got nerfed, but your class deserved to get nerfed because it was stupid. Right, it was terrible gameplay. Uh, um, yeah, so Scrapper probably doesn't even need to get. That. I think Arena even recognized that they're they're giving it some little buffs here and there, um, giving it some extra damage so it can get more uh, barrier. They're making it lose less health. Uh, by taking Scrapper with this um, the this buff to this tray here as well, I think Scrapper will actually end up in a good spot. It's gonna end. I, I think it will end up in a good spot after all the other classes have gotten nerfed. Like this will it will take a while, but expect to see Scrapper being good in a year or so. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, matter. Stay tuned. Get some really nice cooldown reductions Cooper. here as well. Shock shield cooldown reduction uh, down to eighteen, so that's more block up time. And thunderclap uh, four seconds off that for more stuns. That's good. That's actually really good. Uh, and, yeah, they nerfed Hollow as well. I think this is actually um, quite primary. This is primarily a World vs. World nerf. To be honest, I think it actually needs the hammer again in World vs. World because of just how insanely powerful it is in World vs. World. Uh, and it, it definitely deserves it in PvP too. And Holographic Shockwave is the nerf to look look out for here, really. Um, you know, three... Are they half the radius on that? That's big. Wait, Scrapper is not giving me Vitalis a flame... Oh, 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 no. Sig's Flamethrower Scrapper build is unleashed. It is truly <laughs> unleashed. Oh, that is a, a horrifying prospect. What are we going to do, dude? What are we going to do? Um, now, who can save us now? Uh, so, yeah, a little bit of a bug there. If it's not reducing vitality, I imagine they'll get that fixed pretty soon. So, some good nerfs. Hollow definitely deserved it. One of the more obnoxious classes uh, in PvP. Right now. Like, pretty oppressive class. Like, probably needs more. And, once again, I, I, I'm, what I'm really curious is, and this is something that a lot of high, this is high level Hollow players say this, right? Um, is that why aren't they going off to the quickness uptime? I think one of the really big issues with um, Hollow is that it has very high quickness uptime, which makes its abilities hard to dodge, right? And it gives it absolutely crazy damage output. It makes it like Corona Burst very difficult to dodge. Auto attack chains just demolishing people uh, with a ridiculous cleave. So I'm really surprised they didn't go, um, uh, go after a kinetic battery, yeah? And maybe Elixir, um, Elixir U as well. But, oh well, there you go, that's, that's how it goes, right? Medkit can be used underwater. Now that is, oh, that's the big one, dude. Mass Momentum got buffed up as well. This is another nice change, particularly in um, in PvP. So you get more stability up time if you're going to use Mass Momentum for the extra stab. Uh, on With the, it's the, uh, the trait, the hammer trait, I think, which is kind of nice. Um, we do see some other changes to Scrapper, uh, to, to NG. We see some PvE buffs here because uh, they nerfed uh, uh, Hollow. A little bit, and it was a little a bit of an over nerf, considering how strong the other classes are in PvE. And they're just giving it a little bit more damage back. Shape charge. We used to give 10% when there's any Vuln. Now it gives 0.5%. This is more of a normalization. A lot of traits function like this as well. But it's actually better, because in PvE, you're going to always have 25 stacks of Vuln. Uh, and so it's going to be 12%. So you get 2.5 damage modifier there. Uh, and then you also get some more uh, Afterburner, which is a 10% uh, modifier on your attack and gives you a burn stack. So you get an extra stack when you overheat, and you get two when you deactivate the Forge as well. So just a little bit of extra damage there. Little bit of extra damage mixed in there. So yeah, great buffs there. That will give it the nudge it needs. I mean, Hollow already is quite a strong class, and it's packed with utility as well. So it doesn't actually need that much of a nudge to actually be, you know, proper content. It already was, right? But this is a really, this is a nice buff if you're a Hollow player. Elegantly done as well, actually. Um, you know, that's, it's an elegant buff. And now we have Detection Pulse back. F guys, I can't believe it. That is a world versus world centric change. This is actually e even better. This is actually a GVG centric change. Like where this, the loss of detection pulses really felt was actually in GVG, uh, where people will be using this to reveal each other at the start of the uh, the start of the fights. They did reduce the range because it was crazy with one thousand two hundred, um, but still. Yeah, great change. Uh, the previous one, which was um, Chemical Field, it really wasn't, you know, the be-all and end-all. It was, uh, you know, having poison application is not to be sniffed, actually. It reduces healing output, so that was actually a strong effect, and that may be somewhat missed, actually, uh, potentially in a, in a PvP environment there with the, the AoE poison, uh, but still not the end of the world there. Uh, for Scrap, but probably not that upset about it. So, yeah, there you go. And they also increase the cooldown of Sneak Jaro to 60 seconds in Wolverswood. Again, almost a GVG-centric change there, actually. When you say Hollow is strong in Wolverswood, you mean ZV and Zogos are small scale? Small scale. It's one of the... It's a very strong Roman class because it has just crazy damage, dude. It just has just... Just crazy damage. Great mobility, great damage. 
In a Zerg, I think it struggles. Like, maybe if you were really, if you knew what you were doing, you could get away with doing something good, but you're just gonna get eaten alive. Let us move on to Guardian. Let's check it out. Let's check the situation out, guys. Let's have a look. I'll take a look-see. Open it up and see what's inside. Firebrand prevalence in group content has been quite strong as they offer significant support options to the point they were crowding out other builds. In particular, Tome of Courage has had a bit more power than was healthy. So we've sought to tweak that down while retaining its overall playstyle by removing some of its boon generation. We're also reducing scepter damage and increasing sword damage in PvE as the best melee damage option should not be a ranged weapon. Fair enough from a flavor, and I think sword, just thematically, you know, as a DPS, sword and greatsword make sense to me, right? You know, that sounds about right, so there you go. And hey, you're going to be giving fury out to people now as well, so yeah, that's kind of handy if you're on a DH because it looks like they're trying to convince you um, to really uh, run sword now let's see how they're going to do that so orb of wrath that's the auto attack on scepter down by 10 percent in pve this nerfs uh, not only power dragon hunter but also a lot of firebrand builds as well a little bit not much and that's good because firebrand was a little overtuned right now to be frank uh all the um you know the all the you know the, uh, the the buff specs right all use the scepter all the condi builds also use the scepter too and that's kind of a bit weird if you think about it because it's a power weapon just scepter is a, such a powerful weapon that there's something like this had to happen at some point like they could even go further with this to be frank you know actually no they, they don't need to do that but it's kind of cool with uh, the scepter you know you precast them we'll go in the term and do that so i think the, the rotation for the condi firebrand is really really nice right now i hope they don't uh, end up changing that and forcing you to play something else because that would kind of suck to be honest um but yeah there you go it's a good change it had it coming it's a very very powerful uh a trait there. Symbol of Blades. Remove the double strike that occurs when the symbol is first created. Increase the damage of each strike by 20% to compensate. Overall damage is unchanged. This actually does nothing. What this is, it's weird. So what you would do is, you would leap on someone, get a hit, and then the symbol would instantly proc. So this is your nerf to core guard in PvP uh, more than anything else, really. And, and to be honest, a good change. It's kind of weird. You get like a double hit, and uh, a lot of, you know, symbols should maybe not exactly work like that. So you just don't get a double hit anymore. You get the blind and the damage, then you, um, a second later, you'll get the symbol proc there as well. So there you go. But they buffed it, so it doesn't actually happen. Like you get one less proc, I guess, but you get the same amount of damage, right? So, yeah, fair enough. And then Zealot's Defense. Sword 3, guys. Sword 3 damage is up by 20%. And that is what Arena is looking to do. They're trying to nudge Sword as the number one PvE weapon. And as I understand, it was already very close. And without that auto attack uh, and with this buff, I would certainly imagine to see Sword being the weapon of choice. Uh, for a dragon hunter. And honestly, I'm not that sad about it. It's a cool weapon, actually. You know, you have a blink, which is really nice utility. You can teleport around. You can blind stuff. You even have a reflect on your uh, sword three as well. So quite a cool ability, uh, quite a cool um, setup and setup of stuff to use. You know, just be careful on Matthias. Uh oh. Yeah, it, it's 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 cool though. It's fun. You're still going to end up playing Scepter sometimes. I imagine on melee bosses, you're going to obviously play Sword. And maybe if you're on a boss where you can't um, melee it all the time, maybe you at that point you would play Scepter. Because Scepter damage will still be competitive. It just won't be quite as good in an optimal scenario, I would imagine. So there you go. I like that. You know, more multiple choices. I like it. All right, so Sanctuary. Sanctuary buffs. Increase the number of enemies that can be knocked back by the skill before it expires from 10 to 20. Decrease duration from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. Decrease recharge from 75 seconds to 60 seconds. They could have actually kept the duration there, in my opinion. This wasn't an ability that really um, saw play at all. Isn't it a projectile block, not a reflect? Oh, yeah, it's a block, isn't it? Never mind. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. They should make it a reflect. They need to go further. Well, you know, you can, bl well, you can block Matthias projectiles now. Even better. Uh, but, yeah, Sanctuary. It's a little bit... Uh, of a meme ability. I, I don't... It, the only place where you would use this is if you were in PvP, I think. Because it's actually better than you might expect. I think this actually did see some experimentation. I think um, Blackjack used this at one point, I think, playing Sanctuary. Because you can kind of put it down on a down body to free res them. Uh, it's kind of like a res. And you can also put it down on, on an enemy down body so they can't be red hand res anyway. Like, they can only be signated. That sort of thing can actually be quite powerful, and it does some solid healing too. Uh, it's, it's, I, I can see this being used if there was ever a situation where you ended up playing virtues in PvP. I can actually see this being used because then you've got Sanctuary with Master of Consecrations. You'd have Sanctuary on a 48 second cooldown lasting 7 seconds. They, lo they love the number 7. 7 seconds, 7 pulses. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> I can honestly see it being used if you ever ran Virtues. You don't right now because you kind of need the self-sustain. 
of Valor, but if you ended up not needing that, maybe if the meta slowed down a little bit with less damage, less one-shotting, and you were going to play still a support Firebrand, yeah, I can see Sanctuary coming into play there as well. Uh, so next, they moved, they nerfed the Tomes a little bit. Tome Resolve, Radiant Recovery. So now it only cleanses two conditions in World vs. World. Um, same as PvP now. It, it pulses the push, heal, and the absorb. Okay, that's really cool then, yeah. There you go. See, it's quite a strong ability, like I said. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's, it, if you use Virtues, I can I can see it. Honestly, I can maybe even see it now. 60 seconds is not that long of a cooldown. But honestly, you're a bit stacked on what you can take. Like you, you're forced to take Merciful. You're forced to take Signet in PvP. There's not much room for this. Like you're going to want to take something like Contemplation of Purity uh, for the Stun Break or uh, you know the Weakness Mantra or something like that. It's, it's really difficult, you know? It's, it's really tricky. But there you go! Uh, you know, it's good to nerf Firebrand, but I think this doesn't really address the issue with Firebrand. I'll, I'll go through all these changes and explain why. So Tome of Courage... Uh, you get retail. The retail got moved from the fifth skill, AoE, onto you only. And they increase its cooldown in World versus World. I and mean, that's a really good change. Like, this is a very, very strong ability. Like, extra toughness, protection, uh, stability as well. Yeah, it was very good with, with a relatively low cooldown. So it's good they, they increase that. But honestly, like, this isn't really the issue um, with Firebrand. Like, the issue with Firebrand is just it has these insane power spikes. Like, like no matter... The only... <sighs> Firebrand is in a really weird spot where the only way to actually make it not overpowered is basically to remove it from the game like you will end up removing everything from the toolkit of these abilities to the point where it's useless um i think what you should actually end up doing with firebrand is massively reduce the power level of all the abilities less healing less boons less cleansers but then reduce the cooldowns of the tomes back down again so maybe make it um 20 30 40 second cooldowns which are basically halving the cooldowns but at that point you can just massively reduce the power of the abilities like the issue with it is not even like the amount of stuff it can do it's just like it's the spike it, you go from not really doing a great deal except for dodge rolling on people which by the way should be nerfed as well like um uh, the, the <laughs> dodge roll trait is absolutely ridiculously good um but yeah, can it prevent R MI from resing people? No, it won't prevent MI, but it will prevent you from hand resing after you MI. Uh, the stab right, I want to check that out. But yeah, like it's 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 just got so much power spike. Like as soon as you go in the heal tome, you're gonna heal your entire group to like like five health bars. Dude. Like you, your auto attacks are healing for four k in world boss. But even in uh, PvP, your heals are just insane when you go in that tome. Uh, I think you should tone that down, but be able to do it more frequently. Like because. You go from you go from being like killable to unkillable, right? Like whenever you go in one of these tomes, and that is not how it should be, right? These should be a it should be like a heal. You go in it and oh, okay, I'm supporting, I'm healing, I'm cleansing, right? Like now, I think the gameplay is bad for the for the player and the opponent, right? Because w when you're playing with your firebrand, say firebrand scourge, not anymore. Uh oh, right? Um, <laughs> you've got. At the start of a fight, right? Oh, yeah, you know, I can just go ham. You know, we've got stability, right? We've got resistance. We've got all of this stuff. And then after that, oh, dead, right? And it's the same with the heal tome. Like, I don't think it's healthy to have these insane um, power level spikes. Like, this is the same in World vs. World as well. Like, you know, like, once you run out of cooldowns, you just, like, f flop over dead, really. You know, that, that's not that's not really ideal. And having abilities with, like, really, really long cooldowns, it's it's not ideal. Isn't that how it's designed? Big cooldowns? Or is it just another med kit? Um, I actually think my optimal redesign for Firebrand would actually for it to share, basically share the um, initiative mechanic, like have pages as a recharging thing. I would actually turn, um, I would make it a hybrid between Engineer and Thief. I would have it so tomes are like kits and uh, pages are like initiatives. So you regenerate a, a page every few seconds and you can go in any of the tomes and use any of the pages as you see fit. Uh, obviously you'd have, to, you'd have to do some rebalancing there, but I think that would be a better design. Um, like the big cooldowns I think um, is actually for real, it, it it is very frustrating um for the, from the player's perspective and from, from the from you and your opponent right because you know that when he's got the tome like oh fuck right you know he's gonna have permaprot and it's gonna keep getting it's gonna because the, the, the issue with with the tomes is that you know you can counter oh we'll crop them and remove the boon right but then it's back right it's back he's he's, he's pulsing he's like shitting out boons on the entire team right you have these crazy <laughs> big power spikes it just makes it unfun um and it just makes it just no no one no one likes it right and it makes it less interesting as well like having you know big ass cooldowns your entire class mechanic being 70 second cooldown oh come on man snooze fest right uh, you know that's like a bloody elite skill 
at that point. I mean, yeah, it's as good as it's better than a fucking elite skill, but still, you know, it's, it's a less interesting design in my opinion. And, and I think you'll never be able to fix the gameplay unless you redesign the class. Uh, the it, it, you'd have to make it terrible. Like you'd basically have to scourge it, right? Like scourge is effectively balanced now because you um, deleted some of its obnoxious class design, right? Which is kind of what needs to happen with Firebrand. Um, but you know, there you go. That's just my take on that. So yeah, these nerfs, are, I don't think these nerfs are even particularly really that well directed. Sorry, ain't it? Um, one really, really strong trait that needs to be addressed is selfless daring. This is the dodge roll trait in honor. It heals for a ridiculous amount in World Buster. You're talking like 3k on a dodge roll, right? And you've got permanent vigor, extra dodge rolls as well from battle presence too. Like this trait is, oh, sorry, that's right. Yeah, selfless daring and pure of heart are just like god mode in World Buster's world. Uh, PvP as well. I think pure of heart is okay in PvP, but... In World vs. World, where it gets a bit crazy, because you're always hitting uh, fiber with it. Uh, yeah. And you, you could maybe argue that maybe this trait is a little strong as well. Invigorating Bulwark. Maybe take that to 3% too. Uh, just this, the, the output in general needs to go. I, I would kind of say that um, res traits need to kind of get shoved out the door as well. Like, um, as much as I love them because they're incredibly strong. I'd like to see some nerfs to the res traits here as well. Like The Guardian one isn't too bad, but it's still pretty fucking good. I uh, protect the reviver like the knockback. And you get the revive speed as well. It's one of the less obnoxious ones. Uh, and they've been toned down a lot in PvP. But uh, no, I, I really don't like stuff like um, Signet of Mercy. I think it's so frustrating when you put your effort into getting a down state. And this, like, this ability... There is counterplay to it, but... It's so annoying when it gets off, like, it just instantly reses someone up. Like, when you get someone in down state, that should be bad, right? You know, that should be, ooh, not good. Like, the reason Signet of Mercy even exists is because of how fast the meta is. If you didn't have this res power from the Guardian, everything would just die so quickly or in one fuck up. But that's because the game was in a bad state fun-wise, design-wise, right? Hopefully when, um... The game uh, slows down a little bit and isn't just like crazy one shots, insane damage. Um, you won't actually need Signet of Mercy to exist anymore, you know. It's um, and then they just uh, they just meme some stuff here as well. Eternal Armory, they made it less bursty. This is correct. You got to bear in mind that conditions are supposed to be damage over time, uh, and you know the. Uh, power damage is burst, right? This was very bursty. You'd use your Sword of Justice, and it would apply instantly eight burn stacks, right? Like, that was wrong. So they've slowed that down. Now it will give you one stack for double duration. Um, but so it, it basically, all it does, they've redistributed the damage rather than um, removed any. So it's exactly the same, just a bit, uh, bit slower. So perfectly fine change there. And now Stoic Demeanor. This trait now inflicts burning for five seconds in addition to inflicting slow. Reduce the internal cooldown from five seconds to three seconds. Cooldown is now determined per target instead of globally. So, this trait is, I mean, this trait has always had a bit of a hard time. I, I think it's seen some experimentation on some very niche PvP builds. Um, but usually, Lawmaster is just such an insane trait, you can't really give it up. Uh, on a lot of builds because it just it, again, having those passives all the time and reducing the cooldown on your tome abilities is just absolutely insane. Yes, overall, good changes to Guardian. I think... I'd like to see some, uh, not really in the right direction. I think they're not really sure what to do. I'm sure they're not sure what to do with Firebrand as a whole. I think they're kind of waiting on it to kind of nerf it down. I'm not sure whether, I don't think they know exactly where they want to go. So I'm looking to, I hope we see a more, I want to see, I want to see firmness matter. Okay, I want to see Arena take us mm -hmm. by the hand, right? And give us a yank in the right direction. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think some, some more work is definitely needed there. Like Firebrand is still... Oppressive. I think it's one of the classes that could pro is probably kind of in line for a bit of a rework, you know, in terms of how its mechanic works. Don't know how likely that is, but I think that's probably the best way to do it, um, if possible. But there you go. Uh, good changes. And this Stoic Demeanor, like, maybe it will see play. Like, you can actually spam CC on people very hard. And also, there's a really thing. Cooldown is determined per target instead of globally. This is actually massive, guys. That means if you get an unrelenting criticism proc kit on your Axe 2, say in PvP, where you play the kind of like the CC AIDS build, right? With, um, you play stuff like uh, the Weakness Mantra. You play, you know, or, or, you know, like the big AIDS, right? You play a hell of a lot of mantras, actually, don't you? And um, um, I think, yeah, you sometimes play Save Yourselves, right? You just, like, give people, like, mega aids um, in PvP, that sort of thing. Um, you will now AoE burn and AoE slow people with Stork Demeanor. The same with Blazing Edge as well there, and also with your Tome 1 Pull 2. Um, so this is actually, this trait is not to be sniffed at now, and with only a three second cooldown, you can really, you can get, like, very high uptime of slow on people as well, and a little bit of extra burning for some bonus damage too. So if you're playing kind of a hybrid, uh, con well, you're, you're gonna, you always do a little bit of condition damage anyway, like with guard, with, um, with Firebrand, because you have 
have all the burning, you have some of the bleeding too. So, you know, there's, there's going to be damage output coming from this. Uh, no matter what, like, I think it, I think you may even see some experimentation with this trait once again. Like you watch out for Graukaton. Like he's the uh, hybrid firebrand guy. He he's a really good at the hybrid firebrand. He'll probably he might play around with that trait uh, a little bit. Uh, but Law Master is still incredibly powerful in PvP. Uh, well, PvE Wolves would add in PvE, right? Um, it's just you you won't see this in PvE. There's no way you'll never see this in PvE. Uh, you won't see it in Wolves would either. But you may see this in PvP. Like I I, I, can, I can see it. I, I can see it being tried. Uh, I'm skeptical because of how good Law Master is. But um, this is that's a pretty nice. Number for the team fight right like aoe slow aoe slow is good right like aoe slow is fucking legit dude that's actually a really really powerful um uh, a powerful effect to have but yeah that's all the changes for guardian um yeah not bad need to see more really but pretty okay